Hello and welcome to Henry Miller's Movie Reviews where I take a look at films that I've never seen before but others likely will have done. And today, it's about time that I watch the 1966 Fred Zinnemann film, A Man for All Seasons. I think this is probably the first Best Picture winning film that I've covered on this channel, whether it be for the Oscars or the BAFTAs. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I know that it's set in Tudor times and Robert Shaw plays Henry VIII, given my name, obviously. In primary school, people used to call me Henry VIII. So, the story takes us back to the Tudor period in England, where we follow Sir Thomas More, the Lord Chancellor of England, in his final years. There's a lot of hubbub as a result of him refusing to sign a letter, asking the Pope to allow for Henry VIII's marriage to Catherine of Aragon to be annulled because he wasn't happy that he didn't get a son and would rather be with Anne Boleyn and apparently the Pope is somehow able to do this for him. And he also declined to take an oath of supremacy which would separate the Catholic Church with the English monarchy helping Henry VIII to form the Church of England effectively so they could divorce poor little Kathy. So I really enjoyed this. I do think that acting is all around very good with some good barnstorming monologues that work very well. It does feel a little stagey at points. You can tell that this was based on a play, but it wasn't so much that it detracted from the film necessarily, and also a lot of films from this era do have that quality. Though I was surprised when the credits rolled to see John Hurt's name. I did not recognise him at all, but, uh, oh my god, Orson. I just love when he's on screen. He has this really commanding presence, like the Oliver Reed or, or someone like that. It's just fascinating just watching him do his thing. Also, whenever I see him in an older role, I'm always reminded of being in New York City and walking with my family in the Empire State Building and someone pointing and shouting, Oh my god, it's Orson Welles! <laughs> he was the spinning image of him though, so I can't really blame them for mistaking him for Orson Welles. But yeah, he had been dead for many years by that point. His role's very small, but he's always worth the price of admission, even if his British accent it does go wandering off a little. And I do enjoy Robert Shaw as Henry VIII. There is a moment that really encapsulated his power over people, or just, it, you know, the, the power that any kind of leader uh, that people fear would have over them. I mean, you can equate it to the likes of dictators or what have you in, in the 20th century or now. <laughs> but there's a moment where he gets out of the boat and his feet sink into this sodden mud and no one knew how to react. So there's this deathly silence until he looks up and starts laughing and everyone else is just like, oh, that was a good one, sire. <laughs> Just giving them permission to guffaw, I really wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of someone like that. Also, Paul Schofield, no relation to Philip, uh, was really stoic as uh, Sir Thomas More. Uh, you know, this was a guy who really stood by his morals and wouldn't be moved by anything or for anything. Hence the title of the film, A Man For All Seasons. I like that about him. The character has real conviction in their beliefs, which would unfortunately lead to their demise. But um, this was a weird time to be around. But you know, Henry VIII headed to his wives uh, just because they didn't produce male offspring, so what a time to be alive! <laughs> I'd also like the costumes, which certainly look the part, though I can't imagine ever wearing such oversized clothes, particularly in summer months where parts of this film do take place. It's a good thing that England is a largely pretty cold country. Just imagining going on a royal visit wearing that sort of attire to like Nigeria or Sri Lanka or something. It's just unimaginable the 
oh my god, the heat. Also, the direction is is pretty nuts and bolts. There's nothing too impressive, flashy about it, but it gets the job done efficiently. You know, overall, I, I think it is a pretty good watch. I'm gonna give this... 9 out of 10. I would like to see some more of Fred Zinnemann's films. I know he won another Best Picture Oscar for From Here to Eternity, I think. Which I have yet to see, I'll own it on, so I should watch that at some stage. Well, that's my thoughts on A Man For All Seasons. Let me know what you thought of the film in the comments if you've seen it. And, as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We've got more stuff coming. Have a great day. Ciao.